not about the car, it's all about the car deal. Words matter to a car deal, and skilled dealerships know this. That's why they have it down to a science. Today, I'm sharing five highly effective phrases of persuasion in a car dealership. Don't let these word tracks catch you off guard. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's amazing video is brought to you by the Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts to boot. If you appreciate the high quality help that we provide for car buyers with our Homework Guy videos and you want to support our efforts, well, there are plenty of ways to get on board to support us. If you hadn't thought about the words a car salesman uses and how important these words are, and then you've never studied active car trainers, well, much of it is available on sites like YouTube and lots of books available out there like these ones. 76 Cash Making Deal Saving Closes. What do you think this book's about? Or books like this one. Words that sell cars. Do these books look like they contain any information about actual cars? Nope. They don't. There's something very interesting about buying a car from a car dealer that you probably never thought of before. It's contained in this phrase. It's not about the car. It's all about the car deal. If you haven't noticed, almost no training a dealer does is focused on finding the proper vehicle that matches your needs. Shoot, you spend more time picking out eyeglasses. Yes, there are some classes that are offered by manufacturers on their cars, but the truth is that many of you car buyers know more about a specific vehicle that you're shopping for than many of the guys working every single day with those cars on the lot. Why? It's because they don't really care about the car. They aren't doing this job because they love cars. They're doing this job because they love car deals. Huge distinction. And this explains exactly why all the training the car dealer does is focused on Words that sell cars like this, and of course, 76 cash making deal saving closes. Did you know these books were even out there? The words a car salesman uses matter, not to the actual car that you want, but most definitely to the car deal that they want to put you in. You see the difference? Today, I'm going to share five phrases of persuasion used by one of the popular car trainers out there, good old Andy Elliott who uses and teaches these word tracks. This stuff is not taught for the purpose of helping you get in the right car, not at all. Its only purpose is to get you in the right car deal for the dealership. I repeat that because I don't want you to miss out on it. That's why you're gonna hear me say it so often here today. Well, let's start with number one, the exception. This may sound silly to you, but it works. Here's the exception phrase used by a car salesman. I get what you're saying, but have you ever made an exception? Have you ever made one exception? Would it be possible to make one exception this one time? This phrase is designed to get you to focus on the word one, like one exception, this one time, like it's no big deal. It should make you laugh because the question has nothing to do with what's best for you, and it has nothing to do with your car deal. It has everything to do with encouraging you to throw caution to the wind and make an exception from the good judgment that's telling you to go home. Instead of listening to and thinking about this nonsense word track, listen to your gut instead and never make the one exception that the salesman is suggesting that you should make. Trust your gut and go home. Number two, the empathy line. I understand. If I were in your position, I'd feel the exact same way. If this person was actually interacting with you like a human, Perhaps they might actually understand you. It sounds like they do, but they don't. This is the empathy line, and it leads you to believe they actually get you. They don't. Remember words that sell cars? Oh yeah, the empathy line is filled with words that throw you off track and get you to sign a deal that isn't right for you. Number three, passing go. I'd love to sell you this car today, and I know you said that no matter what, you're not buying today, but how will you know a year from now? Whether you buy today or next week, how are you going to know that you made the right choice or not? What do you think the dealer would have done to make you pass go? This phrase really makes me laugh. Do you remember ever spending long, frustrating hours sitting at a Monopoly board, passing go on occasion, only to get a few hundred bucks and then be fleeced by every property it takes to get around the board? Yeah, that's what passing go feels like at a dealership. 
Hours of your time wasted, a few hundred bucks tossed your way on occasion, while thousands are emptied out of your pocket. Don't fall for the pass-go word track. If you hear these words come out of the mouth of your car salesman, it's time that you just pass entirely and go home where you belong and find a better place to buy a car from. Number four, name dropping. Hey Frank, I have an idea. You said you wanted to go home to think about it. How about we take five minutes to go over all the numbers so you have something to think about? Now combine the name drop with an empathy line. John and Krista, I understand. If I were in your position, I'd feel the exact same way. Doesn't that sound pleasant to your ears? They use your name because it's known to be highly persuasive. Hey Frank, I have an idea. John and Krista, I understand. Bonnie, I know what you mean. The use of your name is highly trained at dealerships because it gets you to think the person actually knows you. If you haven't realized how significant this is, do you remember the last time you were just out mingling in a crowd full of strangers and suddenly you heard your name? Well, you immediately thought you must know the person or they must know you. You start looking around the crowd for the person who said your name. It's shrewd on the part of the salesman, but don't be that stupid. You're sitting in a dealership. They don't know you. They don't even care what kind of car you get. In fact, they couldn't care less about you or anything to do with your car buying process. They just want you into a car deal. The car means nothing more than a way to open a gate to a car deal. Remember? I think I've said that like three or four times. That's why all the training emphasis is on getting more money from you and not on making sure you're satisfied with your treatment. I have to keep saying this because many of you get trapped by these feel-good statements you hear from a salesman. Number five, the yes ladder. The yes ladder is very important and most people don't realize what's happening when it happens to you. In the example I'm going to show you, the guy wants your name. That's what he's after. Something you have no reason to share with a stranger, but he gets you to say yes enough times. Well, then he moves you up the yes ladder and you give your name easily when the time comes. This is exactly how you get tricked into saying yes in a car deal you shouldn't be signing. Check it out. Have you ever heard of Six Flags? Yes, I have. Okay, cool. You said you like roller coasters. Does Six Flags seem like something you'd like? Yes, I, I think I'd like it. Perfect. Would you like some tickets to go? Sure, that would be awesome. Haha, <laughs> perfect. Write your name down on these four ticket stubs and they're yours. It opens Friday night. Perfect indeed. There you go, writing your name and contact information down because you got moved up the yes ladder and suddenly it seems totally natural to do something that was very unnatural moments ago. If you didn't realize this, the most common place for the yes ladder to be used is in dealer finance. Small, inconsequential documents get passed across the desk to you. Sign here and there and there. No biggie. Doesn't seem major. There's no numbers there. So you do it. For those of you who have refused to sign these stupid, meaningless documents, they put another document out there that says, customer waives the right to this coverage or something along those lines with the explanation of, well, this is the stuff I have to go over with you, so bear with me. It's nonsense. There's only one reason he or she has to go over this stuff with you at all. They've been trained to move you up the yes ladder. And if they cut short anything, you walk away with more of your money still in your pocket. The finance manager's boss will come later and say, well, Joe, the reason your profit numbers are down is that you aren't using the process like we instructed. You're cutting our throats by trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. Yep, the finance man gets fired for not using the yes ladder method because nobody gets paid to be a nice guy in a dealership, which is why it takes so long and things you are asked about or asked to sign seem so stupid and trivial. They're just using words that sell cars, which open the gate to a car deal, which opens the gate to fees and products and finance packages, which empty out your pockets. Don't let words and persuasive phrases be the reasons you leave a ton of money at a dealership. If you start feeling confused or led in any way by their process and you start hearing phrases like I just shared with you today, well, it's time for you to get out of that dealership. Good dealers will let you buy a car. Bad dealers want you sold on a car deal. There's a huge difference between these two experiences. Find dealers who actually let you buy a car, the car you want, and avoid dealers who use words to sell you on a car deal that's wrong for you. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up 
and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and make sure to join us on many other social media platforms that we are on out there. We post notifications and other updates on several social media sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see right here on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We use our tips to support a great friend of ours, Maggie. She's an amazing young lady who's making a huge difference in the lives of university students, inspiring them with hope and kindness, and Maggie thanks you in advance for helping us support her. Just like the Homework Guy channel, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip today, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. As our following grows, each and every one of you are playing a role in helping to defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who are still trying to figure out that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Wow, what a concept, huh? Thanks, everyone, for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.